without further ado, I will go ahead and give the floor to Mel, who's going to introduce herself to you guys right now. Great. Thanks. Um, as Alexa mentioned, I'm, I'm Melina Fairley. I'm the Senior Vice President of People here at House Call Pro. Feel free to call me Mel. And as a point of introduction, just to let you know who I am and why I'm, I'm sharing with you, I'm not a reporter. <laughs> I'm not a scientist or a lawyer, but what I am is a homeowner, um, a newly working from home mom of four kids, and I happen to have 20 years of human resources experience. So I've been updating our leadership team daily for several weeks now on what's going on in the world related to coronavirus. So we've, we've been bringing that to you here live as well every night for the last two weeks. And as point of reference, I've spent the majority of my career in the retail grocery space. So that was with Trader Joe's, known for exceptional customer service. So I know a thing or two about managing and leading employees who have frontline contact with customers. So I have a, a lot of empathy for, for what all of you folks are going through right now, those of you who are in our homes and who are out trying to get supplies. So I did just want to, before we get started tonight, take a minute to thank all of our essential service workers. So from the grocery store employees to nurses to all of you in the home services trades joining us here tonight, these are the folks, you are the folks who have been showing up day after day, just trying their best to make sure that America gets all the essential products and services that we need to keep going. So this update is, is our way of giving back. So let us know what else you'd like to hear from us. Um, tonight, as always, I'll give you a brief update on the coronavirus. So every weeknight I come to go live here from, from my home in San Diego to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the world. It's, it's a busy and difficult time right now. So my goal is to stay as tuned in as possible as I can to the news and to reliable sources of information so that you can rest assured that you're going to get an update every night um, at five o'clock Pacific. So as, as business owners, I think lots of people are probably already asking you what's going on. You know, how, um, you know, how are, are we supposed to survive? What's gonna happen? And so having reliable information is really important. And so your employees and your neighbors, they're looking to you for information. So hopefully at least this, this five minute update every night that we do to start off the, our time together gives you a nice sense of what's going on in the world. Yep, and make sure, obviously, there's a lot of information out there. We're going to have all of our sources listed when we give you guys the PDF so you know exactly where this is all coming from. Um, just know that now is a prime time for anybody to create um, crazy memes, um, hoaxes, all kinds of stuff. Um, so if something looks like it's copy and pasted, it probably is. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If it sounds too crazy or insane, it probably is. So make sure you check your sources, and that's why we do this in, inside of our PDF. You'll see all the sources where we get all the data from that Mel and her team are putting together for you guys. Yeah, every number that I give you is a number that has a source linked back to it. So every statistic or piece of information, you can see where it's coming from once we publish that, that recap. So to get into our recap, so every day I tell you what the World Health Organization has reported. So those numbers are from, from March 23rd. So from yesterday, the World Health Organization reported um, over 332,000 confirmed cases. And over 14,500 deaths globally. And then here, there are two sources that I'm looking at in the US. One is the CDC and one is John Hopkins. They're both just gathering information and putting it all together. They come out at slightly different time periods. The CDC reported um, over, over 33,000 total cases in the US and 400 deaths um, as of yesterday, which is more than double the number of cases reported on Friday. Um, and John Hopkins here has reported over 46,000 US cases and 591 deaths as of 8.45 a.m. this morning. So that's the, the most recent update. Um, John Hopkins updates their information every morning. So every evening I give you that information as well. And we'll probably expect Mel, it in the next couple of days to, to double. Um, so we'll yeah. keep updating you on the, the growth as well, not just the nominal counts. Mel, have you seen any good resources that help to visualize? Like, it's one thing to hear the numbers. It's another thing to actually see the picture within the United States of where we're seeing the numbers for uh, both death as well as mortality, but also just in terms of the virality of this. Yeah, there, are two, there are two great maps. So um, the CDC has a map of the states where you can click on your state and see and then click on neighboring states and see those, those counts updated. And Johns Hopkins has a world map, sort of a heat map, where it has sort of red 
dots that are growing. And if you're ever on that image, yeah, you can go ahead and refresh it and things will, will change in real time. So this is, this is a John Hopkins um, map right here. Yeah. And again, you can, can continue to refresh it. So they, they publish it in an update, a newsletter once a day, which I read and condense for us here at night. So also we're, we're getting these days typically a daily White House briefing. So today's White House briefing, um, both Vice President Mike Pence and the White House Cor Coronavirus Response Coordinator mentioned that anyone who's left New York City in recent days is likely been exposed to or may have been exposed to coronavirus and should self-quarantine as a precaution for 14 days, regardless of where they are now. So I know, you know, lots of us know, you know, friends or family or friends of friends who maybe were in tiny apartments in New York and have, have gone back home or gone somewhere else. So they're asking anyone who's done that as a precaution to self-quarantine for 14 days. We also heard from, from Vice President Pence that FEMA um, is going to provide additional supplies. So they were able to procure lots of the things that we've been looking for, those, those N95 masks, um, surgical masks. So 7.6 million N95 masks is what, what was reported and 4 million surgical masks, as well as other needed items like gloves. So those were able to be procured from the private market. So they haven't yet had to invoke the Defense Production Act, which is what we heard has, has been enacted, just hasn't put into use yet, which is where they would ask folks who, businesses that haven't been producing these things, sort of come in and ask them sort of in a wartime mentality to produce these. So we were lucky enough as a country to find um, a good amount of current production that they're deploying out to the places that need them most. So we can expect that to continue. Um, also, we've been hearing um, President Donald Trump expressing a lot of concern over the long-term economic impact of social distancing. And right now, the U.S. Senate is reportedly <laughs> making progress on an economic stimulus package to help with those efforts. Um, so we're all going to be staying tuned to see what's going to happen um, with the vote in the Senate. With the vote in the Senate. And we've also seen some additional testing. So in Seattle, as we all know, Washington State was one of the earliest um, states that was having issues with coronavirus. So they are implementing a new testing program. They're going to conduct 300 tests per day um, and an additional 100 tests in local clinics to begin to test people who are not symptomatic to help us get a better idea of how many people um, might have the coronavirus that just don't know it. So one of the things we've been hearing a lot about is like, hey, we're not testing everyone, so how do we know? So this will be a really interesting, um, you know, survey, an interesting pilot study for us to get the results from in the coming, um, coming days. And then globally, um, stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. We saw the UK implement stay at home order, um, India, issued a lockdown, um, Saudi Arabia issued a curfew, the Olympics, as Roland helped update us yesterday, the, the Olympics um, in Tokyo, Japan have been postponed until 2021. So we're seeing lots of global impact to, you know, how people live and work um, across the world. Um, and, and obviously, you know, um, Hubei just ended their lockdown. So everyone that's entering in the lockdown, you know, we're looking at what is the time from like an extreme lockdown to potentially the lockdown going away. Um, looks like that was ended um, or stated when it's it going like to be ended. When they went to aggressive lockdown and then a two and a half month turn, essentially now a very uh, strong test and trace model to be able to then isolate individuals and then trace them back to any other contacts they have so that they can get the economy moving again and get people start moving uh, jobs, opportunity, back to shops, back to restaurants and so on right now, right? Is that basically the model they follow, followed, Roland? Yep, so 70, 76 days. Um, and you know, when we think about um, where, um, where in some states here, some four or five days in, five days in, what is that gonna look what like? What is that gonna look like? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we yeah, saw so today we that saw China's today National China's Health National Commission um, reported that movement and travel restrictions in Hubei province are being relaxed. So 
That means that travelers are going to carry a digital health certificate issued by the government in order to leave, um, and that travelers entering will not require a health certificate, and that they're looking to have travel restrictions relaxed in Wuhan uh, starting on April 8th. So we're beginning to see some things shift. And that's your, your world that's your update. Your so lots of, uh, lots of uh, additional, additional you know, locations going location. with lockdowns and stay at home orders. And I think that that's just the advice that we're getting, the, getting in general is if you don't general, have to you don't have go to somewhere, if it's not essential, essential um, um, your best to stay at home. For those of us that can work in our homes, that definitely is a global trend. So before we get started, before we get started, everyone, everyone, feedback so let's try to fix that before before we go put Brooks on go Brooks on mute Brooks on, Brooks on mute there we go now the feedback's gone now we should be all good you guys hear any feedback no all right there we go okay. cool so I think how this should work is um, only one person speaking at a time will mute ourselves when we're not talking, just to be safe. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. All right. Technical difficulties aside, um, today's topic is awesome. First of all, thank you, Mel, for coming on and doing our daily state of the world. Uh, Mel's going to hop off and shut off her video right now, and we'll see her tomorrow again at 5 p.m. to give you your state of the world. Um, next order of business, let's talk about today's topic. Um, first, I'm going to intro uh, Brooks and Roland. So Brooks is the COO of House Call Pro, and Roland is our Senior Vice President of Innovation, Business, all things. He's also one of the co-founders of House Call, as you guys know. So this is going to be a really great conversation between the two of them, giving you all very actionable tips on both mindset and how to learn what your numbers are telling you and how to apply that into a strategic marketing plan. So by the end of this, um, how I would suggest for you guys to go through this, whether or not you have a, a pen and paper, or you're just going to sit there and listen. Um, we're going to be coming out with um, this whole guide, uh, hopefully tomorrow in our PDF. So just listen intently, Go at it with an open mind and really put yourself in the situation of where am I learning about my numbers? What do I know about my customers? What do I know about my competitors? And Brooks and Roland are going to take you through that whole thing right now. So I'll let the two of them give you a little intro on themselves and they're going to begin um, this, this coaching. This coaching. And I'm going to, I'm going to need it. So this is my first, uh, can you hear me? All right. You good? Yep, we're good. Hello, yep, we're good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, this is my first opportunity to join. I've done some other broadcasts uh, during the last few months in our regular course of business. This is my first opportunity to join the larger broadcast. And a couple of things I'd just like to say starting out is one, uh, a profound appreciation for all of you. And in this umbrella, which we're both blessed and challenged by, but being under this umbrella of being able to provide emergency services which means you, like our healthcare workers, are often going out and taking on some level of risk to go take care of the, of the uh, consumers that are out there, largely in the residential world who can find their homes and taking care of their families. And uh, you know, that's the blessing is that we have job opportunities that are able to flow through the business when other industries are being shut down with more draconian measures. At the same time, you all are trying to solve very hard problems which are choices, right? The choices of, how do I take care of my health when I have a family to provide for? I have employees to provide for. How, what choices do I make with my employees and getting them out in the field or not? And I know there are no simple answers here, but I just want you to know that we have an incredible appreciation for you and what you've done. And the other point of thanks I have, and again, I just feel incredibly blessed by the team that we have here at House Call Pro. And uh, it is the, how quickly we've been able to stand up this channel, this medium, to go accomplish three things. And it really it's been a hard, heavy lift of Roland and Alexa and Mel and Scott and our marketing team and a whole just cadre of people behind the scenes. But to quickly get this channel up to provide a few things. One, a connection for you all and that sense of community and just, again, appreciation 
for all of you to go and for us to go do research on trusted science, evidence-based, database resources that we can then filter and point to you all, hopefully as a trusted source of information. And then the third thing is to, and you'll see that in the theme of this conversation today, to try to give you actual ideas. What is one idea or two ideas or three ideas that I can go put to work to help get my business going and moving in a certain direction. So incredibly appreciative of all of you and our team on our side. And I'll follow up that note in a second. So Roland, did you want to introduce yourself even though you are iconic at this point? I don't know if I'm iconic. I don't know if I'm iconic. <laughs> <laughs> so um, obviously what Brooks just mentioned, um, a big component of this is making sure that um, you keep yourself open to new um, innovative ideas and trying lots of things and testing and iterating and using the data that you're getting in real time back um, so that you can um, pivot, um, double down on things that are working or stop things that are not working. Um, so we're going to walk through some of those ideas here, but that is really core to making sure that you're always moving forward. Because uh, if you're not moving forward, you know, and you're just kind of putting your hands up and I don't know what to do and I'm just staying just at home, that's going to be a very difficult position to bounce back from when everything comes back. So our goal here is to give you some of those um, ideas to go test, um, but also inspire you with that, that spirit of um, trying things that might seem uncomfortable or that you normally wouldn't do and it's times like these when it's the perfect time to try things that are uncomfortable because that's the right growth mindset and will lead to the results that you're looking for coming out of um, this, this situation that we're all in. So um, we're going to talk about the, the kind of the two different um, types of, of data. Well, there's multiple types of data you should be looking at, but Brooks, when, when you're thinking about a pro's business, um, what are things that they should keep tabs on or how do they even begin to start um, looking at their business uh, in a way that's, that, that's database? Yeah, uh, well, let me just offer a couple of thoughts and then we'll jump into the, the very specific topic for the night. So I'll couch this in saying, you all have been really accustomed to Mel and Roland and Alexa and their voices are very soothing and their approach is very uh, gentle, I think, compared to mine. For so anybody who's been in a mastermind where you've heard me speak, my style tends to be very direct, very informational, I hope, and also very challenging to any individual. And it's just the way I am in general, and the way I lead companies, uh, and the way I support all of our people and hopefully all of you. But my style is definitely very different than theirs. And along this theme, I want to speak to a couple of core principles here that will then flow through the rest of the conversation. So in, I've consumed, as have most of our team, just incredible volumes of information in the last few weeks to stay ahead of this thing. And it, what is clear in my mind is that we are in a wartime mindset. And I can't put that in a more gentle way. The closest proxy we have is last great war. Or war we have to bring the whole world together in a conflict. Well, this time we're fighting a common enemy, which is this virus. And while we're trying to fight this enemy, we're also trying not to kill the patient at the same time, which is the economy of the U.S., the economy of the world. And it's an incredibly delicate balance between those two ideas. And as many of you have seen, no one has the answer. There's no single answer to that balance point. But what we have seen in the evidence is that in this wartime mindset, what we're trying to do more than anything, just like we did in World War II initially, was just to find time. Time is the greatest single beneficiary and gift that we have so that we can gear the machine up to go fight the, world, the real war. The real war is against the virus. And what it's gonna take is gearing up this war machine for materiel, for things like ventilators, for things like respirators, for things like masks, and most importantly, testing. Testing is the most powerful stealth weapon that we have in this wartime experience that we will all find ourselves contributing to over time in the months to come and the weeks to come. So what we're trying to get is time right now so we have better options. And with those options come the ability to test and then to isolate so we can get the economy kickstarted and rolling forward. And hopefully not in a year's time or even six months time, but hopefully in months of time if we take the really aggressive measures earlier today, much like you saw in Asia and a lot of their practices. Their success was based on testing, however, and right now we're still behind the eight ball and getting tests in the hands of all of our customers. And think about it for you all. If we have testing, we know who's already been cleared through the virus and also who is healthy so that you can go in with good conscious, conscience and take care of people in their homes. So testing is a really powerful stealth weapon that we need to go build 
our war machine to go build and distribute those out to the people uh, so they can make good decisions and take good actions in the collective. So right now we just wanna buy time. And I know the lockdown periods seem incredibly restrictive to everyone, and they are. I mean, if you look at the impact to the economy, look at the impact to each of you, it's an incredibly challenging time. That said, if we buy ourselves some time, we can make better choices later on. So this is a wartime mindset towards a common enemy. And as an extension of this idea is the topic we'll talk about today. There's a view that panic is a common emotion that people are experiencing. It's very human right now because it's so extraordinary. Yet I would argue that panic is an emotion that you choose to invest in, but it's also incapacitating, it's debilitating. It'll just stop you in your tracks. And I promise you in a wartime period, if you stop in your tracks, you'll get picked off and you'll fail. So your choice then is to go the other direction, to no longer invest in panic as an emotion, instead to focus on what you can control and start to take an action. Any one step towards the next 100 steps is critical. Move towards the fight, move towards the battle, and you may not always be right in each step that you take. But what I can tell you that action is how you ultimately win the battles and the wars that are coming are already in the midst of them. So what we're really strong advocates for, Roe and I will talk about today, is what action can you take next to take more control of your business, to provide for your family, to solve these incredibly hard problems that are here at hand? And so we want to talk about, okay, as a challenge to you, what are three things that you can start doing today, tomorrow, to move your business in the direction of success and eventually, again, as the economy starts to bounce back towards thriving, not just getting by, but to thrive again at some point in the, in the few months to come. So, Today, we wanna to talk about action more than anything else. We wanna table the idea of panic and fear and let those emotions go away. Instead, focus on what you can control and taking that first step of the next 100 in front of you, okay? I hope that makes sense to you all. Roland, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so, so for the people that are afraid of taking the wrong action, why would you tell them and how should they be thinking about taking some action, even if it might be temporarily in the wrong direction, is better than no action? still and there's a war out in front of you you're an easy target you're just going to get picked off but as long as you're in motion of some kind it may not be the perfect step or the perfect idea but action is action it makes you a much harder target to, to get it. and actually gets you towards the breach as well it gets you to the front line so what we would suggest is use as much data and evidence as you can to make decisions and then go figure out how to experiment along the way as well. Knowing that your experiments, one or out of two may be wrong, but at least it's an effort. You go figure out if it works and then go try the next idea and the next idea and the next idea. Many of those ideas you're gonna borrow from other people you expect. I love, like Roland is a fountain of ideas. I've always been sort of gobsmacked by just how like he's just overflowing. And we say yes to many of his ideas and his innovations. And they've been some of the most powerful ideas in this business just like this COVID-19 channel that we've created is a brainchild from him and from our marketing team. So the idea is you won't always have to be right. And that's not as important as taking an experiment, putting it in place and moving forward. And look, borrow from other smart people, see what's tried and true and what's working and then move your way down the path. Does that make yeah, sense? So yeah, let's, let's talk about that idea because I feel like, although it may seem like, um, you know, I have ideas or people have a lot of ideas, a lot of it comes from looking at other industries that have already done something similar. Um, and so, so to that end, one of the actions that we want you guys to take is now that you have a little bit of time on your hands, um, take a second and look around and look and see what are your competitors doing? What are the ads that they are running? Do you see any ads? Are they running any ads? Um, do you, um, what, another thing, secret shopping, another action you can take, call them up, figure out, start to think, what are the services that they're offering? Is this something that you can offer? Or is this a service that you're currently not offering that you should be offering? Or does this sound almost too desperate? And how do you, how do you tell, um, that by calling them or looking at their website or seeing the specials and deals that they're offering, um, to then start to inform a list of things that you're going to go start to try. You don't have to make it up, just borrow ideas and see if they work for you. But I think there's a step even before that, Roland, which we can talk about here, which is, hey, look, what's already working? If you have yep. a job yep. or a handful of jobs that are still flowing through your system, 
what are they? Like, what customer is that coming from? An old customer or a new customer? Is it a certain zip code? Is it a certain kind of work that you're starting to see a pattern of success around, right? Is there a lead source uh, that's coming to you that's working better than something else? Like postcards you sent out a while ago or emails you're sending out today. What's working? And double down. Because if you have five jobs this week because of that particular opportunity, can you get it to be 10 next week? And it may not have been the 20 you had a month ago, but by God, it's better than zero. So what is already working in your business and double down on that? Does that make sense as a starting point, Roland, in your mind? Yeah, and that one sounds really easy, but you have to be very aware of the data that's coming in. So you should take time every single day and go through and come up with some of those things that Brooks just said. So come up with a column and just use Google, Google Sheets. Start with the basics. You know, um, people don't think that as a tech company, we don't use Google Sheets. <laughs> no, no, everybody uses Google Sheets. So oh, wow. write down every single job one by one and on the columns, Put down what's the zip that it came from you know what's the type of persona is it an existing or is it a new uh, what's the age of the persona you know what's the type of job that they did does is it an essential is it non essential is it a new job um, put down the price of the ticket does it seem like people are doing cheaper jobs and not big jobs what are those and just start tracking those on a day-by-day -day basis take a second to slow down and just look at the data that's already kind of coming into your business so you can go double down on the ones that are working because those are the ones that are still coming in right now yeah I mean, I just feel like I, I have more, we call them trackers in our business than you could possibly imagine. It's probably like it, everyone knows that if I go kick off a new initiative, it's going to start in a Google sheet. We're not going to go build software. We're going to put in a Google sheet and we're going to see what's working, what's not, and then keep adjusting our investment and our effort against that. So look, keep it simple, but do the work, right? If you have time, look at the patterns and try to understand what the heck is working for you right now. And then Separate from that, once you know what's working, you keep doubling down on that and just getting a little bit better each day along the stuff that's proven. Then have this other bucket, which is around innovation, experimentation. And this is what Roland was getting at before, which is go look at what your peers, your competitors are doing, other parts of the country. Like what's a guy in HVAC in New Jersey doing that I can learn from in Texas right now? What is someone in home cleaning still doing that's working for them? Like we're seeing all these companies still coming and signing up at our, for our platform because they're home cleaners because they're finding new ways to go create business because they found the idea from someone else. So the same idea here on your marketing and trying to find new leads is learn and test and then track what's working and then keep doubling down on that and then double down on whatever's working. Know that it's okay if half of those ideas fail, but at least you're in control of your own work and you're creating opportunity for yourself and you'll figure it out, I promise. So I think the idea yeah. of what's proven, double down, what's experimentation as a bucket, try it, track it, and then keep moving forward. Yeah, so double down on what's working, and then we're gonna talk about the experimental um, bucket. And one other thing just to add on is um, we're in a lucky or an unlucky, however you look at it, state where, um, you know, um, in California, Washington, New York, um, now New Jersey, and now Illinois, there are states that have um, progressively already shut and locked things down. And you might be in a state that's not quite um, at that stage yet. Use this opportunity to look ahead. It's almost like um, a cheat sheet. Look at some of the states that are already on lockdown and how that's affected business and what they're currently doing, because invariably you're going to find yourself in a similar position. So use that as kind of a a time travel machine, you know, one week forward uh, for where you currently are um, to go take some of those ideas and start to learn ahead of time because guaranteed your competition's not even doing that. They're not even thinking about that. The only reason you are now is because you're, you're watching this and we're trying to get you guys to be really proactive about this. A really cool tool that exists. Is just look at another state. Points of light or data, right? And there's so much data in your existing book of business too. What did you book and complete last week? What's on your calendar right now? Just do the simple analysis there. And I don't care if it's only two jobs or it's 10 jobs, depending on how big your business is. Try to find the commonalities between them so you know what to do next, all right? And then get really creative and experimental and just copy the heck out of other people's work. And the other thing is socialize those ideas here. Like, it's incredible. It's also humbling what we see in this forum. And this is open to everybody. Go in this time of warfare, it is about everyone coming together to go fight a common enemy. 
And what I'll say is that you don't really have competitors at this point. We're all trying to get through this together to get to the other side. And so share your ideas with other people. Keep ideas flowing so that we don't have to go create every new idea ourselves, but we can borrow and improve the ideas that are out there. I guess the greatest common gift we can have to do something extraordinary here is sharing information with one another, supporting one another, because there is a lot of, it's just it's overwhelming at times. But if we keep helping one another, we will go and fight and beat this common enemy for sure. So on this theme, Roland, can you think of three ideas that are like for you top of mind about what to go do and try next? Um, the first thing is the one that you already alluded to, which is export your customer list right now. If you're using House Call Pro, um, think about very easily what is the best zip code that you service. What is that one zip code where a customer calls and say, hey, I'm in Rancho Santa Fe, because I'm in San Diego. I'm in Rancho Santa Fe. I, I need X, Y, and Z. Export your customer list, find that zip code, and then start your call list. And what you need to do is create something that is repeatable so that you can apply that same input to measurably get an output. So the script could be just as simple as, hey, how's it going, Brooks? I'm giving you a call. I cleaned your carpet six months ago. I just wanted to let you know I'm actually gonna be in the area. Is there anything I can pick up for you uh, while I'm around? That's it. And just be quiet and let them speak. Um, this is a really clever, easy hack where you're um, adding value and because you've got the time and you just pick up the phone, a simple export of a customer list, this is the number one thing that you can do right now to start drumming up business. And even if it's not for business right now or today, this is gonna be somebody that's gonna come back towards your business when we come out from the back end of this thing. So you're creating a positive brand moment for the long term, you're creating an opportunity for yourself in the short term, and all you have to do is pick up the phone and call. You know what, on that note, the idea of making a cold call is one of the most terrifying things to human beings. And I totally understand that. But when you think about your livelihood, your family, your business is at stake, you will, I promise you, you will get over that fear. But to Roland's point, just keep it simple. A simple script that really shows empathy and care for your customer because taking care of the customer always wins. And so keep it simple, keep it very customer focused. And just say, hey, how can I help you? What can I do for you? Get about you and let me know what I can do here. It doesn't have to be complex, right? Just keep it simple. And it's the effort, it's the intent. And then I promise you the muscle that you're building will get really powerful very quickly. You'll be able to go through your list of 100 customers or 1,000 customers. Just say every day, I'm going to call 20 of my customers on my list or 50 now much time you have. Set a goal a simple script, and then track how you're doing and who you connected with. And then look there and start to see the pattern. Oh, yeah, I was really getting a lot of people in Rancho Santa Fe. I'm not doing so well down south in San Diego. So I'm going to keep calling more people in Rancho Santa Fe and getting more jobs on the books. So experimentation mindset number one is start calling your customers, connecting with them at a person-to-person -person level, and see what good comes out of that. All right, what's next, Roland, for that big brain of yours? All right, this one's really easy. Um, I, we've been asked this a lot. Um, this is a other piece of software that I highly recommend you all use. It's free up to 2,000 users. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this in literally just a couple minutes. Um, the reason why I'm gonna walk you through how easy this is is because I hear a lot of people make excuses why they're not doing this. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this and prove to you just how quick and easy this to do. Um, this, whether or not, by the way, you're using House Call Pro or some other software, it doesn't matter. Any software uh, should make it very easy, easy for you to download your customer list. So inside of House Call Pro, for example, I go to the customers here, um, and then I click this triple dot, and I go download customer list. When you download this customer list, it actually sends it to you um, to your email, and then it sends it to you as a CSV file. Once you've got the CSV file, um, uh, it arrives. <clears throat> you're going to take that, you're going to upload it to MailChimp. So I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. So this is an incognito window, and we're gonna we're gonna build a, a quick business right here. So we're gonna go Mailchimp. Watch this. Sign up free. I feel like I should be there. Should be like a time clock kind of right here in the corner. All right. So let's do an e let's do a little email here. Accept all the cookies. Okay. We're gonna do Roland plus Mailchimp at housecall housecallpro.com. Okay. Username Roland Mailchimp. Okay, password, one, two, three. 
for that. Get started. All right, now it's gonna have me check my email here. Um, so real quickly, I'm gonna pause my share, go to my email here, activate my account. So I'm gonna go here and press play again. So they sent me an email right here. So now that I'm in this email, I just click activate account. All right, now that I'm not a robot, I click this button, I am not a robot. I select the free plan right here, see this, up to 2000. I hit complete. Okay, make up my name, make up my last name. It's gonna take me through a couple little onboarding steps here, but obviously you'll, you'll wanna enter your real information. We're just gonna zoom through this real quick. Continue, okay. Do I have contacts? Sure. How many email subscribers? Continue. Okay, continue. Not right now. Not gonna do the marketing path. We're gonna go, let's go. Okay, so now that I'm in here, start designing your first email. We've got some really great marketing examples. We're gonna link a blog post here for you afterwards. Um, I'm also gonna link you to this um, really cool tweet. Um, this is um, by Levi Strauss, the company has been around for well, over 100 years, that's for sure. Um, and they wrote down what the elements are that you need to write in an email to potential customers, uh, prospects, or existing customers. So we'll link this one here for you guys um, so you guys can um, go take a better look at this. But once you have that, you're gonna go in here, you'll design your first email. Right now, I'm click, I'm gonna do this later. Now I'm gonna add your contacts. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is. All you do is you click Import from File, CSV, click the Continue button, okay? We're gonna upload that CSV here. So let's go to my downloads real quick. Where's the CSV right here? CSV, there we go. Customer import. All right, continue to match. You guys may think this is hard, but you just click skip all, continue. And what's gonna happen now is we're gonna add this as a I don't know, clients, continue here. All right, and it's gonna to start to import. So I click the import button. And you can see here, we're importing the list. Now, I'm gonna go off a of screen share real quick right here, but this is how simple it is. Literally, that took me all of three minutes. I was looking at my time. So in three minutes, I easily exported all my customers, CSV, created a brand spanking new account on MailChimp, which is free, up to 2,000 users, uploaded that list, and with that cool little marketing example, and we'll also post a blog con content article here on what you should message out to your clients, just saying, hey, we're here for you. Um, here's how we take our precautions seriously. Here's what we do in terms of the PPE, so personal pr protective equipment, um, and then you go from there. So right now, let's see here, we're importing your list. Let me hit refresh on here. And look at that. Oops, uh, share one off, let's share one off here. So if I share my screen real quick, your import is complete. We'll automatically refresh this page, you know, show your new audience. So here you go, I got my 387 contacts in here. If I want to go send an email now, I just create that campaign, boom, and it's there. So for those of you that need something to do in the next three minutes, if you have time, this is an excellent way to really quickly reach out to all your existing customer base with a custom crafted message in MailChimp for free. Um, take you about 15 minutes to do it. There's no reason you shouldn't be doing it. So that's number two, the second thing you should be doing. That's awesome. Uh, like Roland's a big smart geek on this stuff, right? And they all, but I'm telling you what, he just walked you through. We'll give you the step by step by step layout for this. And they make it easy because that's their business that they're in. And everyone should be thinking about how do I get this broadcast out? Use the templates you have. You don't have to create it yourself. Um, the, the framework, you use your words, your way of thinking about your business. But we'll give you, again, the step by step and the template to make it really easy. So now you got two ideas, right? things that you can control and start moving towards the fight. And that fight is to go win the battle of time, but also to get your business, continue to tick over and to get jobs in your calendar. So you have outbound calling against your customer list, connect with your customer. You're gonna send that same message in an email form to connect with the customer. You may even wanna change the sequence, send the email first and say, hey, Mr. Roland, did you get the email I sent you? I just wanna reach out and connect with you. See how you're doing in these really challenging times. Is there anything I can do to help you or your family in these, in these difficult circumstances. So maybe the email gives you an opener as a way to go make those calls outbound to them. So something else to think about. So that's two big ideas. Roland, you need a for me? 
Yeah, the, the last one is something that um, as we've been contemplating as, as a business, as a house call pro, what's something that we can enable for our pros to do um, and find a way to, to help you guys make it cheaper. So another great way to reach out to your customers is postcards. So postcards is a medium. I've gotten a couple of them. Um, in fact, let me see if I go grab one real quick. I should have grabbed it. Um, but let's see here. Where it is. I threw it away. Um, um, anyways, you should probably all have gotten the postcard um, from the White House that shows all the steps that you need to do. It's got um, Trump's 15 day plan on there. Um, he sent out postcards. If he's doing it, this is a great medium to get it out to your customers. And so, at House Call Pro, we're going to do um, is we want you guys to be able to send them out. We've created um, some postcard packs for you. Obviously coming up with creative stuff is sometimes hard. So we've taken that out of it. Um, so let me share my screen real quick right here. Um, so one thing that we've done here is we've created a template pack of all kinds of different postcards um, that will show up in your House Call Pro account. If you don't use House Call Pro and you wanna send it out through another means too, um, we're gonna post this just in the coronavirus Facebook group. If you want it, all you got to do is just put your email address and we're just going to send it to you. You can take this to um, any mail house and they'll be able to do this. You can even add your logo to it if you want. If you need help adding your logo or customizing any of these, in that thread, let us know. We actually have a couple of our designers that will just customize this postcard for you. But as you can see here, these are all kinds of very relevant postcards. Um, you can see here, we take precautions so you can feel safe. Um, you know, take comfort in a clean, peaceful environment, you know, from our family, wishing you good health. Good Even health. if you just let Even them know, hey, let them we're know, here. Hey, we're here. Um, these are, um, all, these are great all great ones to send ones out. To send out. Yeah, oh. and uh, so we're going to give you, as part of our challenge to you, we're also going to give you some added value here when we close out this session or at the very end today. Uh, we'll talk about something we'll be able to give you to help you on this front. But again, like think about these three different ideas now. You've got probably email first, follow up outbound calls, and then the postcards will come out a week or two from now and I'll have something in front of them. Because remember, your customers have a lot of time on their hands too at home in the lockdown or in the lockdown. So they'll get that postcard and like, they'll actually spend the time to read it and you may get a lot of value out of it. So these are three ideas. Look, we could go through 30 ideas to you, but these are just three places to start right now. Again, things that you can control, start moving to the fight. I promise you something in this mix will help you in your business. No matter what, you will feel better because you will feel in control of your own destiny. It may not get you to a perfect outcome tomorrow, but it will in the days and weeks to come when you start to move through this incredible well, wartime experience, okay? So we hope this is really helpful for you all. Again, what we implore you, we beg you to do, keep sharing your ideas with one another. You all are far more innovative. I mean, from day one, the ideas that we've seen on safety protocols, on like the tele, what do they call telepro? You know, how do I do, how do I connect pro through video, through FaceTime and sort of evaluating what's going on? Yeah, from day one. I mean, the communication approaches, this group is way more creative than we are on our team and there are way more of you. So keep sharing those ideas in this forum. We're all in this war together, in this battle together. So help one another out so we can get to the other side of this thing. And I promise you that we will be here every day, all the way through the fight to make sure we're here to care for you and support you in any way we possibly can. So Roland, as we think about closing out, what was your thought in terms of the promotion we would uh, give our pros? Yeah, so yes. right now the postcards right are now. 86 cents. Um, we would do them at half off. At half. So they'd end up being 43 cents. Um, literally that's the cost of the postage. So if you want to mail anything right now, that's the cost of the postage to send postages anywhere. So um, we're eating all those costs for you guys. Uh, we're negotiating good rates for you guys right now. So that way you guys can send those out. So if you are using House Call Pro and you want to use this as a way to get in front of your customers and show them that you care and you're thinking about them, this is going to be the ideal be the way to do it right now. And we're going to do this all the way through the end of April for you guys. So that gives you an entire month and some some days here. So we're going to we're going to time box it. But now is the time to take action. Now is the time to go look um, at the templates inside of your House Call Pro account and send those out. Customize the back of them and use this as an opportunity to send them out. So we're gonna be making those adjustments to your guys' accounts um, tomorrow. And so don't send any so out, right out right now. Um, tomorrow, um, tomorrow we, we're, we're gonna go we're apply gonna go to all apply. of our pros and you're gonna be able to send them out for half the cost of what they are now through the end of April.
sort of, uh, sorry, there we go. Um, if you did send some out today, we'll go just uh, send a direct message to Roland or to me, and we'll make sure we get that sorted out at the same rate. We're also gonna make sure that everyone has access to email and postcard marketing as a feature in the platform. Some of the plans have it, some of them don't. Until the end of April, we'll make sure every one of you, everyone has access to that feature if you're a subscriber to House Call Pro. Again, we just wanna make sure that that part is, the feature is free and available to all of you so that you can use our email and also you can experiment with these postcards as well, okay? So we hope that those things are helpful for you. Again, we just wanna prepare you. This is not gonna be a war that's over overnight. You got, we're all gonna be in this together for weeks and potentially even months to come. We are unbelievably fortunate that we're in this emergency services umbrella, even during these lockdown periods, so that there is opportunity for jobs to flow to us, even if it's a few versus many, it is something. And that means that we have income coming to our businesses to take care of our families, to keep roofs over our head and to take care of our employees as well. Uh, we are just blessed in this front. So uh, we're really proud of you all. I know it's been an extraordinarily difficult time in, in a world that no one quite understands right now. And that said, you guys are doing exceptionally well. Is there anything we can do? Again, just reach out to Roland or to me. We're happy to get on a phone call with you, talk through ideas with you, be empathetic, just listen to you, whatever it takes. So we're here for you as is the rest of our team. Roland, anything you want, do you want to uh, close out on? Yeah, we've yeah, we've, we've got a we've got a couple QA couple questions Q here. Um, Alexa, do you want to pick out two? Because we've got time for two here. So I just came back on to tell you I can't see any of the Q and A questions. So I have all right, I'll pick one out. I'll pick one out here. This is the most highest um, thumbs up upvoted question here. Um, so I'll ask Brooks this one here. Um, is it socially responsible to go service clients' homes even if we don't see any people? aren't we still potentially bringing the virus into their home? Okay. Yeah, this is a ticky one, right? This is a tough one. So until this is why I said that the first battle is about getting testing, always available with instant results in this country, as you've seen success in other countries. Because if you were tested, you would not have any worry about going and taking that step into the home. Okay, we don't have testing yet. We will in the weeks and the months to come. Until that day, you will have to make choices for yourself, for your customers, and for your employees. You should have very structured safety protocols in place. Have I been healthy? Am I healthy today? Have I taken my temperature? Not one or the other. You need to look at all of those inputs. What am I going to do to make sure I have disinfected? What am I going to do to make sure I keep my distance from the customer if they're at home, that they're not in the same room with me? What am I doing to disinfect all surfaces as I leave the environment as well? Your reputation today and for tomorrow will be dependent on this. So take it incredibly seriously. If you are going to provide an emergency service in the home, have safety protocols so you're doing the right thing for your customer and for yourself and your family so that all of you stay safe in that process. Again, great. Make sure you're in healthy conditions. Make sure you have no fever. Make sure you have the appropriate gear to go into that environment and make sure you have disinfectant and you have uh, a no touch approach as well, that you're not having them sign off on anything. Go cashless, go no touch for signing off, keep your distance from one another, don't share a room together. Those are the basics and then you have to make your own choices. We can't give you legal advice here, but we tell you if you are gonna make that choice, do everything you can to follow really rigid protocols so that you can get there, okay? I feel like that's the perfect note to end on because a lot of these questions ask it the same thing just in a similar way. So um, on that note, the one ask I have of you guys is those three things that we mentioned, cold call your existing customers, email your existing customers, and postcards to your existing customers. Those are three things you guys could do literally tomorrow and start making a dent at producing new jobs for your guys' calendars. Then this podcast or this podcast, this video cast is going to be available on coronavirus, um, housecallpro.com forward slash coronavirus. It'll also be available in the Facebook group if you want to rewatch it. Um, we'll also post the, the fully uploaded video on that resources page that I told you about. And then we're going to have um, links to the postcards that I showed you. Um, I posted that link here in the chat. We'll post that again to everyone that um, entered their email here to come watch this webinar. 
We'll send it all out to you guys with the instructions, with the PDFs. My ask of you guys is share that with other tradespeople that you know that maybe aren't in the group yet uh, or don't have access to this kind of information or haven't watched our webinar series yet. So we're on every single night, Monday through Friday, from five o'clock till now-ish, um, Pacific Standard Time, eight o'clock till whenever we end on the East Coast. And excited to see so many of you guys still tuned in all the way here till the end. All right, is there anything else, Alexa, that I missed? No, I'm very proud. You ended it very well. I'll just say thank you again. Uh, Roland, Alexa, Mel, you have done something extraordinary here. I'm proud of you and I'm thankful to be able to work with you. And for all the rest of you pros, if there's anything you do for it that we can do for you, please just reach out. Uh, good night and take care. Thanks for letting me join. Bye, everybody.